Today on America's Test Kitchen, Julia makes Bridget the best shrimp and vegetable kebabs on the grill. Jack challenges Bridget to a tasting of whole milk Greek yogurt. And Dan shows Julia the secrets to making authentic Persian-style rice. It's all coming up right here on America's Test Kitchen. The idea of putting meat or seafood on a skewer and cooking it over a fire goes back decades, if not right back to the cavemen. You know, it was such a good idea, it was probably a cavewoman. I like that. I like that a lot. And I go so far as to say that cooking meat, kebab style, is probably in our human DNA. Mm -hmm. And as time went on, people started adding vegetables to the skewer to round out the meal, which is where all of our problems began, like shrimp and vegetables. They're not the best kebab mates, and they cook at different rates. And today, we are going to skewer this problem once and for all. Mm -hmm. And the star of our skewer is shrimp. We're starting with a pound and a half of jumbo shrimp because they can stand a slightly longer cooking time on the grill because then you can get some good grill color. All right, and so we're just going to simply peel and devein the shrimp. And to peel them, I like to start by the tail end and just pull off the legs and that outer shell all the way up to the top. Because this is a kebab, I'm going to take off those pesky little tails. You just want to pull it and shake it off like that, and then you get the little delicate tail meat, which is a delicacy in my house. And then, of course, to devein it, you want to take a sharp paring knife and just cut down the back of the shrimp, and you want to look for any sort of discolored vein. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Here, there's a little bit of discolored, and you just want to take that vein out. A lot of people don't devein their shrimp. You can always tell because it tastes a little bit bitter. So a lot of recipes for shrimp kebabs that we found either put a hearty spice rub on the shrimp, which overpowered its flavor, or loaded it with a marinade, which really turned them rubbery. So we're not going to do either of those things. Instead, we're going to brine them. So here I have a quart of water. And to this, we're going to add two tablespoons of sugar. And of course, that sweetness helps reinforce that sweet shrimp flavor and helps them brown a little better on the grill. And a little bit of salt. This is two tablespoons of table salt. And of course, before you add the shrimp, you want to make sure all that sugar and salt is well dissolved into the water. All right, there we go. In go the shrimp. Now we're just going to put a cover on this. This only needs to brine for about 15 minutes, but we do want to refrigerate it. And if you could help me by putting this in that little refrigerator under the counter over by you. All right, so shrimp are well taken care of. Now it's time to focus our attention on the scallions, bell peppers, and mushrooms. Now, the good thing about scallions is they actually grill at the same rate as the shrimp. Huh. So it makes them a very nice kebab mate. And to prep scallions for a skewer, you simply want to trim the ends. And here you want to trim the root end. And then we're just going to cut them into three inch lengths. So that's usually the white part, and then two of those, and that's all you need to do. So this is like the dating game. We're trying to find <laughs> which of these vegetables are the perfect mate that's for right. the shrimp. That's it. Gotcha. All right, next up is the bell pepper, which is a classic component on a kebab, and an easy way to do a bell pepper for kebabs. And of course, I washed this pepper already. So I'm going to trim off the top and the bottom. Now, these aren't so easy to put on the kebabs, but I'm going to save these for salad later. Waste not, want not. <laughs> I'm going to slice through the side of the pepper and open it right up and take out that core, and then I'm going to trim away any seeds and ribs. And this is a great way to prep peppers, no matter what you're doing, because if you're just going to grill them, you could lie them flat. If you're going to roast them in the oven, you're ready to go. Or if you're going to cut them up, you can cut them into any size. So this is my favorite way to prep a bell pepper. Now, for the kebabs we're making, I'm just going to slice these into 3 quarter inch wide lengths. So what we have here is three peppers total, and that's going to give us enough peppers for our skewers. And the last vegetable is the mushroom. And today, right. we're going to use cremini mushrooms, which are also known as baby bellas. And they just have a little bit more flavor than your average white mushroom. And of course, I gave these mushrooms a wash before. You can easily wash mushrooms. It helps you get rid of any of that grit stuck underneath in the cap, as long as you're going to cook them soon after. And the only thing we need to do is just to trim off the stem so that it's flush with the cap. All right, so the scallions are going to cook at the same rate as the shrimp. But the peppers and the mushrooms, they're going to take a bit longer. So rather than overcook the shrimp while waiting for these guys to cook through on the grill, we're going to par cook them in the microwave before we make the skewers. You want to microwave these in batches. And so the peppers will take about two batches, but the mushrooms you can do all in one batch. And you just want to line a plate with a double layer of paper towel. And we're going to arrange the peppers skin side down. And before you microwave them, you just want to sprinkle them with a little salt 
about an eighth of a teaspoon. That seasons the vegetables, but it also helps to draw out some of that moisture. All right, so now we're gonna microwave these, and the peppers take about two minutes, and the mushrooms take three minutes, and then after that's all done, we're gonna let them cool, and we'll come back and get the skewer in. All right, so I finished microwaving all the vegetables, and then I drained the shrimp, and now I'm just gonna pat them dry, because you don't want wet shrimp going on the grill, because they won't get very brown. That seems pretty good. Now it is time to get skewering. All right, so grab a shrimp, take a little mushroom, and nestle it right into the shrimp curve. All right. Isn't that cute? Oh, that is. It's like a yeah. shrimp button. You just want to slide the skewer through. Now take a couple pieces of scallion. Now if you're using the scallion white part, just use one. If you're using the greens, use two or three. There you go. Put that down on top. Take two pieces of pepper, one after the other. And you got it. <gasps> there That's we go. Kind of, That's kind of pretty. It is pretty. And we're going to do this three times. But the thing I really want to point out here is look how flat that skewer is. That means we're going to be able to get a good sear on this side and a good sear on that side. And that's why we cut the vegetables the way we did. That's why you're being so precise. Mm -hmm. So this makes eight skewers total. And here I have some vegetable oil. I'm just going to brush them lightly on each side. All right, now we're just going to season with a little bit of pepper. Don't want them too spicy. And these babies are ready for the grill. Fantastic. All right, so that grill has been heating up for about 15 minutes with all the burners on high, and it's time to get going. So first thing I'm gonna do, of course, is clean the grill. And we always like to do this before we start cooking, get any of that baked on crud off and get nice, clean grill grates. Now we're gonna take a little vegetable oil and rub it evenly over the grill grates. Helps get up any dust and helps keep those grill grates nonstick over time. So our grill is nice and clean and well oiled, and it's time to cook our kebabs. Now obviously these cook through really fast. It takes about five and a half to six minutes total, so it's about two and a half minutes a side. So as is always the case with gas grilling, you wanna grill with the lid down so that it traps all that heat. All right, so it's been two and a half minutes. Oh, it smells so good. It does smell good, doesn't it? Oh, I look at those shrimp. Nice little bit of char, some golden grill marks. Of course, we're just gonna flip them over so it's that second flat side down. All right, so I'm gonna put the lid down and we're gonna go for another two to three minutes. Sounds good. So it's been about two minutes. Let's take a look. Oh, don't they look gorgeous? They do. So you can see nice and charred and brown on yes. the second side. Does that mean they're done? That means they're done. Thank you, my darling. Mm. These are just some of the prettiest skewers. They're beautiful. Mm -mm -mm. All right, I'm gonna turn off the grill and I'll meet you inside. Sounds good. So before we dive into these gorgeous looking skewers, I'm gonna whip together just a quick vinaigrette. It adds a little burst of flavor right before serving. So this is a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. And to that, I'm going to add a quarter cup of lemon juice. And I'm gonna add two teaspoons of oh, freshly minced thyme, one clove of garlic. I'm gonna use a garlic press to help get that right into the bowl quickly. Half a teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of Dijon, and last but not least, eighth of a teaspoon pepper. And this is just gonna add a really bright kick to the shrimp skewers just before you serve. All right, so there you go, oh, two yeah. for you. And I'm gonna put a little bit of vinaigrette on top. How do you eat your skewers? I de-skewer. You de-skewer, I'm gonna mm -hmm. de-skewer them too. Mmm. <laughs> Those peppers are perfectly done. I'm gonna go right for the star of the show, <laughs> the shrimp. And I love that the shrimp are juicy and they taste like shrimp. They're not covered up with too much dry rub or marinade. I love this, Julia. You've proven that shrimp and vegetables can play together nicely mm -hmm. on a skewer, so thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. So shrimp and vegetable kebabs have evolved for the better thanks to modern technology. Start by brining jumbo shrimp to ensure they stay juicy. Then par-cooked peppers and mushrooms in the microwave. Nestle those shrimp and vegetables nice and tight on the skewers, then grill directly over high heat until lightly charred. Finally, finish the dish with a quick and bright vinaigrette. And there you have it, from our test kitchen to your kitchen, the very best grilled shrimp and vegetable kebabs. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Jack is here to walk me through all the ups and downs of our recent tasting of whole milk Greek yogurt, or as they call it in Greece, yogurt. Bridget, <laughs> this is gonna be so much fun. I love 
big stories in the food world, and Greek yogurt is a big story. It went from nowhere, 1% of the yogurt market in 2007, to now half of all the yogurt we buy is Greek yogurt. It's pretty much all I see at the supermarket. It's everywhere. So the first thing is mostly about texture, and I'm gonna demonstrate the good yogurt it's thick and creamy, and you see it was thick enough. Now this looks creamy, doesn't sure it? Does. It? it looks fine, but it's not uh. actually thick. <laughs> <laughs> now why this matters is because the difference between Greek yogurt and the yogurt that you and I grew up with is that it's strained. And so during the processing, they get rid of all the whey so that it should be nice and thick and creamy. This is a sign that something went wrong in the yogurt making process. Now it's time for you to start sampling these. And this is a big hint, thick and creamy. So start digging your spoons in. All right. Now we found that there are lots of ways they can make it thick and creamy. They can do it the Greek way, which is to actually strain the yogurt and get rid of the whey. That's very expensive. They need four times as much milk to make the same amount of Greek yogurt versus regular old-fashioned yogurt. Wow. So American ingenuity means they have found shortcuts. <laughs> and they've added things to make it seem like it's thick and creamy, but haven't gotten rid of the whey. And the way you can tell this by reading the label is looking at the protein content. When they remove the whey and the liquid, the protein content goes up. The shortcut is to leave the whey in there and then add pectin. So as you are tasting these, you're gonna notice there's some differences. Some are a little bit tangier. Some have a little bit more gamey flavor. And I would say within the tasting panel, there was less consensus about this. There was total agreement about the consistency. Any chalkiness is definitely a fault. Any sort of wateriness, that's a fault. So lots of information. Any yes. initial impressions about anything that you've tasted here? I've got a barnyard going on down here. <laughs> I don't care for that. And uh, this one, off the charts tart for me. I prefer these two. I think I've come down, I'm a little scared, but I think I've come down to liking these two. Okay, which one's your favorite? This one. All right, and then where do you want to start? Ones you liked or ones you didn't like? Well, let's go with the ones I didn't like so much. Starting with this one, at the barnyard. The tasting panel agreed with you. This is Cabot. Middle of the pack was not one that we responded to favorably. Texture and flavor issues there. Mm -hmm. This one I also didn't care for. Okay. So this was at the very bottom, Chobani. This was really too thin. Mm -hmm. They didn't use any of the gimmicks. We think that maybe it's just what experts call mechanical shear <laughs> that disturbs the molecular structure and you end up with a more watery yogurt. All right, should we go with my runner up? Badoom. Greek gods, so this was in third place. Okay. It uses a little bit of pectin, which we were not wild about, which gives it a little bit of an off texture, mm -hmm. but it was better than others. Okay. And this one I'm hoping is the winner. And you are correct. This is the Fai. It's the number one brand in the U.S. The most expensive yogurt that we tested, one container is eight fifty. Yes. Because they are doing it the old-fashioned way and using four times as much milk to create a small amount of yogurt. And it shows. It was super creamy, nice and thick, very balanced flavor great texture. You chose the winner, Bridget. Great job. Well, if you'd like to choose the winner, well, then go to your store and pick up Faye Total Classic Greek Yogurt for $8.49. It's the Test Kitchen winner. Many cultures treat rice as more than just a side dish, especially the Iranians. Cello is a rice dish they make for special occasions. Now, authentic recipes for cello are handed down through the generations and can be hard to get your hands on if you're an outsider. But recently, we uncovered the secrets to this highly revered dish right here in the test kitchen, and Dan's gonna show us how it's done. I am. So, cello is a really great dish because you get two dishes in one, kind of. Mm. It's a study in contrast. You get this really nice crispy bottom layer, which is called tadik, and then you get the lightest, fluffiest pilaf you've ever had. Mm, so it's a twofer. It's a twofer, yeah. So there's a lot of steps we're gonna take to get the rice really, really fluffy. The first one is starting with the right kind of rice. So this is two cups of basmati rice, and it's a very important rice to pick out. It's long grain, it's really nutty and aromatic, so it has great flavor, but because it's long grain, it's gonna cook up as fluffy as possible. So there's a few steps we need to take to make it do that, and the first one is rinsing it so we get all that starch off, so the water's gonna run clear. And I'm gonna transfer it over to this big bowl. The next step in traditional recipes is to actually soak it overnight. And we found that using cold water, room temperature water, you really do need to go a long time, but using warmer water, it's a lot faster. So I'm gonna take four cups of hot tap water and a tablespoon of table salt. Just give it a nice stir, make sure that salt's dissolved. And we're gonna let this sit for just 15 minutes. Well, that's all it takes. Yeah. This has been 15 minutes on this rice. It's time to drain it. 
So the next step is a parboiling step. What's interesting about cello is it's actually a steamed rice dish. So if you don't cook it a little bit ahead of time, mm -hmm. there's not enough moisture in the pot to actually cook in the end. So I've got eight cups of boiling water over here. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of salt. Oh, that's a decent amount of salt. It is. A lot of it's gonna come off because we're gonna rinse it again afterwards. So you need a lot in there in order to taste it. And I'm gonna add my rice. And give it a good stir. And we're gonna boil this until it's almost done, but just a little bite to it still. It's gonna take three to five minutes and the rice will start to float. So it's a good indicator when it's done. Okay, Julie, this is exciting. We've got some mm. floaters. Oh yeah, right? check it out. Yep, they're probably cooked enough. I just mm -hmm. wanna taste one to be sure. Yep, that's perfect. And we're gonna drain it. My glasses are fogged up, so I can't tell if I actually got the rice <laughs> out. Okay, great. So, Julia, I'm gonna give you a little job. You're gonna make me wash dishes, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I knew it. All right. All right. Rinse and dry. Got it. And in the meantime, I'm gonna come over here and give a cold rinse to this to stop it from cooking. Right, perfect. The pot is clean. Perfect timing. So, I, I shocked it in the cold water. It stops the cooking. It also gets rid of any excess starch that's on there. So mm -hmm. we've taken a lot of steps to get rid of it. So we've really done everything we can to ensure that we have a nice fluffy pilaf. That's only half the equation. Mm -hmm. The other half is the tadik, or that crust. Oh, the good part. Yeah, the good part. So we saw a lot of recipes that just use oil and rice on the bottom, mm -hmm. and, and it starts to brown and crisp. They're pretty good. We found ones that had yogurt in it, and it's much, much better. And the reason behind it is yogurt is really high in protein. Mm -hmm. We're using Greek yogurt, so it's especially high. It also has a lot of lactose, which is a sugar. So you get lactose and the protein together, you get that Maillard browning. So here I've got a quarter cup of oil. This is vegetable oil. And I've also got a quarter cup of Greek yogurt. Next, we have a teaspoon of cumin seeds and a quarter teaspoon of salt. All right, so now I'm just gonna whisk this together. Now we're gonna take two cups of our rice and that's gonna turn into tadik. We're gonna put it right in here. All right, and I'm just gonna fold this together nice and even. That's looking pretty good, nice and put together there. Next up, we're gonna just finish this rice off, which is a half teaspoon of cumin seeds in here as well. So yeah, we've got cumin in here and in here. Yeah, that's a lot of cumin. All right, we're all set with this stuff. Mm -hmm. Get back to the pot over here. Don't you like how clean it is? You did a really nice Professional job. Professional job. There's nothing worse than going through all this trouble and making a really nice tadik and then not being able to get it out of the pot. Yeah. To that end, we're gonna use a tablespoon of oil here and just kind of paint it along the bottom and about an inch up the sides. Now, this is the fun part, because it's very hands-on. We're gonna take the stuff that's gonna become our tadik, we're gonna put this in the bottom. So I like to kind of spread it out evenly, as much as I can with my spatula, mm -hmm. as I drop it in. So it's really important to pack it down well. It's mm -hmm. all about good contact with the pan. If it doesn't contact it, it's not gonna brown that well. So just kind of work from the inside out. Perfect. Now for the pilaf portion. If we were to just lay this in an even layer across, there's not really any place for the steam to escape, right? There's gonna be a lot of steam coming up mm -hmm. from the bottom. And so we actually are gonna leave a space around the side and mound it in the middle. This is a very particular dish in how you arrange the rice. Do you have all the rice grains numbered? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think number 152 is out of place. All right, so just a little mound like this, kind of like a little anthill. <laughs> yeah, it's a rice anthill. Yeah, and pl right. plenty of room around the side for steam to escape. Mm -hmm. So the next step, believe it or not, is butter. So we have this mound in the middle, and I'm just gonna put little holes here. <laughs> just like that. This is a good recipe for the kids, too. It really is. And I'm just going to drop a little cube of butter in each one. Wow. This is a unique setup for cooking rice. One more thing. We're going to add a third a cup of water. And this is going to provide enough steam that we're going to cook the rest of the rice on top. But this way, it's really sitting on top for the rice that we want to steam. Mm -hmm. It's not touching the bottom. OK. So now it's time to cook. Are you ready? Oh, wow. We're there already. Yes, we are already. So <laughs> here's my lid, and you see that I wrapped it with a kitchen towel. Yeah, look at that. So this is a technique that we saw a lot of times. They have these little hair nets that they put on top of the lids. And what it does is it traps the steam that would otherwise condense on the lid and then fall into the rice and make it soggy. I love how you tied it on the top, too, because sometimes when I make rice, the towel flops over into the stove and it starts to burn That's a little so bit. Good. Yeah, you only do that once. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna bring this up over medium high heat. I'm gonna cook this about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. We're gonna start to see some steam coming out. And we're gonna hear the crackling, that frying of the rice going on the bottom. Really? Yeah, and to make it really even, we're also gonna rotate the pot halfway through in that first 10 minutes. Then we're gonna drop the heat down to medium low and go for about 30 to 35 minutes. 
Okay, so it's been 35 minutes. Is it time? It's time, Julie. Yeah, I'm gonna kill the heat right now. So I'm gonna take this off just for a little peek, oh, and then we gotta put you. it back on for a second. Yeah, I've been very patient. I know you have been. Oh, look oh, at good. that. You can still see the holes you poked in where you put that butter, yep. and you can start to see the browning around where the tadik is. It smells good, right? Yeah, it does smell good. So we're just gonna pop the lid on here, and this gets transferred over to a wet towel that's in a baking sheet. What it does is helps cool the bottom really rapidly, so you get this contraction of the crust so it doesn't stick as much. Ah, clever. So we want to get it out. That's important. So this takes just about five minutes, and then it's time to serve. All right. We'll take the lid off here. Still nice and steamy. So we're going to add two tablespoons of minced parsley, and I'm going to season with salt. Mm. So I'm going to stir it in, and you want to be careful. You don't want to go too far down and actually dig into the crust. All right, that looks great. And I'm just going to spoon it out. So this is where if I were a little bit more talented with this dish, I could <laughs> flip the whole thing over and just invert it, but I find this to be a bit safer. And I've got a nice thin spatula. Which yeah, is, this is the part I really want to see. I know, this is where I make or break it, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna go around the side first and really just start to lightly loosen it. So what we're gonna do is actually split it up a little bit. It's gonna make our lives a lot easier. I'm gonna go in and kind of dig with this spatula. Oh, you hear that? that looks so good. I'm gonna get a nice piece out like this, take it over, and just flip it over. Oh, Doesn't that look, look good? Look at that. People are gonna fight over the tadi. Yeah, no it's kidding. It's just what's gonna happen. So you're better off to avoid that at the table is to just kind of break <laughs> it into smaller pieces. All right, so I'm gonna do some peel off in the bottom here. Don't then, skimp on that gorgeous crust. Nice, oh, big piece. I'll oh, give you a couple you. big pieces on top. Ooh, I smell the cumin, I smell the brown yogurt, and of course, that grassy aroma of the basmati. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That is so good. Mm hmm Oh, it's crunchy. And that was a lot of cumin. I was a little worried it was gonna be overpowering, but it's not. It's very light and fragrant. Yep, and you get those bursts of it in there. Yeah. Oh, so awesome. So for the best tasting rice in the world, quickly soak basmati rice in hot, salty water, then steam it until nearly cooked through. And to get that precious tadik, layer the partially cooked rice with some yogurt inside of a Dutch oven and dot it with butter. There you have it, from our test kitchen to your kitchen, the ultimate recipe for Persian-style rice with golden crust. You can get this recipe, all the recipes from this season, along with our tastings, testings, and selected episodes at our website, americastestkitchen.com. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.